Well, hello, everybody. It's your friend James. Trust you're doing all right. And uh, I'm excited because today we get to talk to an agent who's doing amazing things. That's what we do each week on here is talk to agents who are doing absolutely amazing things. And today is no different. Jima Che, how are you? Doing great, James. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for being on. You have built a really cool business in a really short amount of time. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Would you introduce yourself to everybody, though? Tell them a little bit about you, who you are, where you're from, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I'm Jim Che from uh, Ghana originally. Um, so I'm residing in Maryland, D.C., Virginia area. Um, so from Keller Williams, a Palmarboro office. So um, yeah, that's just a little little about me. I have I'm married with three kids, two girls, and a son. That's awesome. And you've got a sneaky good business. You got your license in 2018. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And you capped in your first year. So I always get excited about people who cap in the first year and then it's built from there. But what's interesting to me about you is that from 2018 until January of 2022, you were dual career. You were running a real estate business and you had a job. Talk about what it's like to be able to cap and build a big business while you were dual career. Cause I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, James, that takes um, hard work. And, you know, initially, just being honest, like 2018, 2019, I was just more into entrepreneur way. I'll call people whenever, um, you know, so I, I knew that in order to have, in order to be able to cap consistently every year, I had to make time to make calls. And Saturdays were, was my best days because I was off on weekends. So on Saturdays, our call expires for sale by owners and, and just get a couple appointments and, um, that's how I started my business. On the, what kind of drive do you need for that, though? I mean, it just seems like that you've got this other job, which, by the way, you were successful in that job, um, and yet you wanted to build this real estate business. How do you kind of create the drive and the desire to then on Saturday morning go call for sale by owners and expires? James, I'll tell you this story. Um, when I got to Keller Williams 2018, I think in January was my first bold, and um, I joined that board, the, the first one, and man, I was blown away. I called my wife immediately and I told her, look, I'm going to quit my job. She's like, you crazy. Get out of here. You haven't even sold a house. You don't even know how to open a lockbox. And so because all the incredible things that I could imagine being with Keller Williams and being in business was mentioned at the board. And I couldn't just imagine that. So um, that was when my you know, I started really grinding. It's like, you know, I really want to build a business. I want to be consistent. I want to make sure that I'm doing the things that matters the most and, you know, be able to cap every year. And that was, that's where it started. i um, taking both for the first time. Wow. That's amazing. And so how do you, how did you balance it? How did you balance having your, your full-time, you know, Monday through Friday job and then balance building a real estate business where, by the way, in 2018, you capped in 2019, you did $4.5 million. In 2020, you moved in the top 10 of your market center. And in 2021, you were the number one individual agent in your market center. So how how does one balance all of that and, and have the success you had in your business and still be able to do the other things you were doing? That's 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 a good that's a good point. So, you know, I was I was fortunate enough, my job, you know, I was a district manager, I made my own schedule. Um, and yet I will work, usually I have to be in the office by five o'clock in the morning. So by two o'clock, we are done, right? And so in between that, I was able to take calls. I was able to make calls. Um, and that was how I balanced it, you know? So I will work consistently from five in the morning to maybe two o'clock. And then from two o'clock was real estate. So if I had appointments, I'm taking people out, showing houses. If I had listening appointment, it's all scheduled after three. Um, that's how, that's how I balanced it. And then on weekends, you know, that's when I'm in the morning, that's when I make my calls. Um, and just being honest, like I also took advantage of social media. And so, you know, I was able to share information on social media, which attracted conversations. So we were, it was back and forth, even during that, during work times, I was able to have conversations and schedule appointments after two o'clock. And that's how that's how I balanced it. And you know, thanks thankfully to my wife, you know, also really very supportive as far as taking care of the kids. And so that I didn't have to worry too much about you know being home every second. Yeah. 
You were doing a ton of DMs. You were you were sending private messages to people all the time. Did you have a certain number you wanted to send a day? And then what did you say in those? Yeah, so I will I will met private message people um, in in India DMs and say, hey, happy Thursday. How's everything going? And if they do respond, we we'll just have a normal conversation. And so that usually when I post. When I do DM and introduce myself, I don't talk much about real estate for the first time. And so when I post a real estate conversation, you see those people that I had conversations with commenting on it. That really built some kind of relationship. And then my next follow-up question to them, if I post a story, it was like, where is this house? And where? So then I can have real estate conversation. I have permission to have real estate conversation. So I was very strategic about it. Um, a day I will probably DM maybe 10 people, at least 10 people. And out of the 10, maybe six or seven of them will respond back. It's <laughs> absolutely fascinating. And here's the thing I, I, we can't over, you know, can't skip. You moved to the United States from Ghana in 2009. That's correct. 2000. Okay. But you moved to Detroit. I was in Detroit. Okay. Yeah. So you were in Detroit from 2009 until when did you move to the Maryland DC area? Same year. So I was in Detroit for six months. And I okay, moved. six months in Detroit. You moved to uh, Maryland, D.C. in 2009. But but you didn't have this huge network of people. I mean, it's not like you knew hundreds and hundreds of people. You'd moved here from another country and and are, you know, you went to Detroit because you knew someone there. You went to Maryland because you knew someone there and they said, come here. So that's what you did. And, and so now you're kind of building this from scratch. How did you grow your database? Because I have a lot of people will say, James, I don't have anybody. I don't know anybody. I don't I don't have any anybody in my sphere of influence. You're not even from Maryland or D.C. You grew up in Ghana. So how do you grow a database in Maryland, D.C.? What are you doing to meet people? Um, James, so for, for when I got into real estate, you know, um, I knew I had to talk to people. And so what I did was pass friends that I worked with years ago um, and then co co-workers and then immediate friends, maybe five, six people. And then I would go on Facebook and friend they are friends, right? So that's how I started getting. So like if we have mutual friends. And so when we have conversation, oh, my, we have mutual friend. We have mutual friend with Bright. How do you know Bright? And then I say, oh, I grew up with Bright. Or, and then that created those conversations. So um, I was very, 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 um, you know, I, 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 I strategized that to make sure that I built a lot of friendships. And truly, like a lot of people trusted me at my job. I was the top salesperson there. Um, and I built really cool people around me. So I was also a district manager. So in between that, working with my team and also um, working with stores, you know, I got that trust from them from the get-go. And so when I told them I was a real estate agent, they felt confident enough to give me their business. And I know that getting involved in your church was really important too in growing this business. Tell us a little bit about how, because that's a and it's another area people say, hey, I, I'm, you know, I'm not comfortable going in and selling in my church. There, that can be a touchy spot for some people. Yes. Uh, and yet that became a very successful avenue for you. Tell us about that. So 20, 2019, I started a church. I went to the church and I, you know, I really loved it. So I became a member. And, you know, towards the end, I, I met the reverend. I was like, hey, where can I have a meeting with you? So he, he introduced me to the secretary. So I meet the secretary and we schedule a meet with the reverend and I took on a lender with me. So I went there and said, hey, Rev, um, we've seen that we you, we have really cool people here and I think that we could also help them as far as buy or sell real estate. And this is my, how I did it. I've sold over four million. And, he, and immediately he told me, you know, we have real estate agents in, in the church. Um, so Fast forward, you know, I started seven well in the church. I wasn't really, the real estate wasn't really part of why I joined the church to begin with, but I also saw an opportunity there that, you know, instead of people in the church going outside to buy houses with other people, why can't they buy with me? And so I built a relationship with the reverend and fast forward, you know, and that started being, being a servant, right? So I was a servant. I contributed heavily in everything that they were doing. So that gave me the gateway to even have a really good conversation with the Reverend. And in 2020, he gave me the green light to do a seminar because COVID was there and nobody had knew what was going on and nobody didn't have anything to do. Everybody was locked down. I said, let's do a seminar on Zoom. We did it, over a thousand people watched it. Um, and that was the breakthrough how I started um, my church uh, before. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just, here, here's my lesson from that. First of all, you asked. You got to be willing to ask for what you want. Um, so that was the first thing. You got some resistance, right, from the reverend to start that he wasn't all, he wasn't real excited about it at first. But you continued to pour into a community that you cared about. This was your church. You cared about the church. You weren't there to go build a business, but it was part of who you are and what you're doing. And so you should earn business from that. And so you gave back. My understanding is you paid for the screens that they used there. You helped repair the, pay to pay, repair the roof that was leaking. I mean, you just, you really gave back to this group, not with an expectation that anything would come. But then the moment came where the reverend said, wait a minute, we do need some help right now. We do, and, and this is what we could do and partner together. And that totally unlocked a ton of opportunity in your business. So what's your, what's the lesson from that that you want others to know? Be persistent. And I think the biggest part is be willing to serve and be willing to give back. Um, we've given over $150,000 to, to our church in the past two years um, with nothing. And we didn't expect to get, you know, anything in return. If we sold property, that's great with anybody in there. But that's what we were willing to do for the church. And so um, my reverend alone just single handedly gave me over $60,000 in GCI just from from one person with referrals because we gave so much back and he just felt, you know, these are, this is incredible people that really to serve my community. And so I'm going to also help them out. And so okay. that's, that's the biggest part of it. Be willing to give back. And especially if you even doing a farm neighborhood farm, you just can't pick up a farm. You have to be willing to give back, do a lot of sacrifice to the people in that community and you get it back. Not just mail a postcard. It's get yeah. involved. It's get engaged. It's connect with people. Yeah. I, I really like that. I can't let this one go. You said you did a, a, a home buyer seminar that had a thousand people that watched it. Yes. Okay. Give us your secrets on how you're getting such great turnout at your at your seminars. The reverend is very popular. That's how it started. So I knew that if he shows up on the screen, you get so many people to watch it. Even so, when we started a Zoom, we were we did the Zoom just the two of us, and then you know he broadcasted it on his Facebook page and the church page. And YouTube. And so when he lights up his camera, leisurely, like I can go back and watch all his all his um, interviews or anything he's done and over thousands watch them. So I knew that that would be like a, a really good hit. So once I got his permission, just him showing up his face and he interviewed just like he's doing and really commented on the great things that we were talking about. And I mean, people were sharing it left and right. And over a thousand people so far has watched that video on Facebook and YouTube. That's absolutely amazing. Again, it's uh, who in your database is it that's a connector of people, that knows people, that's really well connected, right? These are your allied resources, and the reverend of your church is one of those people. All right, so this year, you're basically, you did, well, you did 45 units. You're selling about a house a week, but this is the year you went full-time. So you said, all right, it's time. I'm going to quit being dual career. The first time you called your wife and said, I'm going to quit, she said, you're crazy. What did she say this time when you went and said you want to go full-time? She pressured me to quit. Oh, she wanted you to. So yes. what changed? Because she saw the consistency of everybody coming in. She's like, when are you quitting again? Because it was getting overwhelmed doing both. You know, to do 15 million, you know, I, to do 33 transactions and a full-time job, you know, she, it was getting very overwhelming. And so she, you know, started asking, when are you going to leave the other job? Because she knew that the consistency was showing up. And so that's how I got her to uh, agree with me on that one. How do you know it's time? Like, how do you know that that it's time to hang it up? Because we got a lot of people watching that are dual career. We also have people watching that are nervous because their productivity isn't where they want it to be. And now they're worried they might have to go at a second job. Uh, so how do you know it's time to quit? And how do you make sure you never have to go back? So, James, in 2020, um, I had a coach and end of 2020. And I told him I'd want to leave my full time. I wasn't serious. And we talked about what would it take to leave the full-time job. So we had to do 12, you know, 12 million to subsidize my full-time job, how much I was making and everything. So we had a plan. We had a GPS. We had a 411. We had how many conversations I had to have, what activities I had to do, how many seminars do I have to do, how many churches do I have to add to the, my current church in order to hit that, that uh, volume in order to, for me to leave that job. Um, James, gratefully, we did we executed that plan and we did 15 million um 33 transactions that year and i felt really good about what i did so that's how i left so get a coach get a plan together and 
you can execute. I love that. So who you hang out with matters. The questions that you're asked matters. The way you look at the answers matter. Um, but you needed a nudge. It's my understanding you were in a CV. You were taking career visioning. And and you you still, you'd done the things, but is this right? You were still a little bit nervous about it and you needed a little bit of a push? Yes, I did. So I met um, this guy in the CV. He's doing over 200 units and he was he was a t school teacher, quit in the middle of summer. So they told him he could go back. So he, I was telling him I want to leave my full-time job. He's like, dude, go ahead and do it. What, what would be the worst thing that could happen? Right? Go back to it, get a job. Okay. What could be the best thing? You could fly. So that that same day, I came back and told my wife, I'm ready to go. I think yeah, I've done what I needed. I'm ready to go. That's awesome. All right. So based on your experience, you've again, 2018, you capped in your first year while being dual career. Then let me make sure I have it right. 2018, 2019, you sold 4.5 million. 2020, you went in the top 10 of the office. 2021 became the number one individual agent in the office. And then this year, uh, 2022, you're doing you know 45 units. So as you look back on that, what's the advice you'd want to give people out there that that you know want to have a great 2023? I would say have a coach, um, someone that's going to hold you accountable, and have a plan together. You know, so even 2020, 2020, 18, and 2019, I just never felt good that I was going to be full time because I just didn't even know what it took to do certain volume until I had a coach and had a plan. And so be willing when and once you have the plan, I was just willing to do the work because all my life I've been really working and I'm, I've been always willing to do it and be willing to do the work. And who you surround yourself really matters. People that are going to coach you, people that are going to motivate you and people that are going to tell you, dude, um, just keep going. And that's what's really matters. So I will advise everyone, like get a coach. If you don't have one, hang out with someone that can hold you accountable and have a plan together because you can achieve so much with your own potential. But if you have to move from E to P, you have to be very, very purposeful and go with and follow the model. Jimmy, you're a genius. I like you a lot. Thank you so much for being on and sharing. Congratulations on your success. Uh, I know you're going to have great things happen in 2023. What's your goal for this year? Goal is to do 70 units. Um, so in 2020, what, 20, this year we hired our first admin, um, and James, that really got me grinding because my first initial, when I got into 2022, you know, I didn't have a full-time job. It's like, you know what, my my big why was to not go back. Mm -hmm. So I had to do what it, I needed to do to in order to stay in business and yep. to be able to feed my family. And in 20, and then in the summertime, we hired an admin. So admin came on board and I said, I this is a great person. I cannot have her in two months tell her I can't have you back in because I can't yep. have her back. Yep. And so in 2023, we're looking, I'm looking to build a team, um, hired an, another admin by March and advise agent um, to the team because I'm we're currently really overloaded on buyers and we I have to focus more on listed. So yeah. we're looking to add a buyer's agent and um uh, keep see how the year will end with us. Uh, there's no doubt you're going to be great. You know, you can get you focused on what you do best, which is connecting with people and selling. That's what you're great at. Get the other stuff off your plate, help alleviate some of the buyers so you can lean more towards listings. There in any doubt, you're going to pick up that 70 unit number. And in a market that's declining, for you to be able to go do that, it's a double win. Jima, thanks for sharing with us today. We're proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, James, for having me. Thank you.